In this video, we are going to take a slightly deeper look at Old School RuneScape's interface. I'm going to walk you through each tab in the interface, giving you a brief rundown of what they are used for. As I explained in the main Introduction to Old School video, your in-game interface may not quite look like mine. There are small differences between the in-game interface for mobile users and desktop users, as well as people using different interface layouts. However, the content of the interface will always remain the same. It may be arranged differently, but your core features of the tabs, chat box, and minimap will always be there. So let's jump into the content of each tab in the interface. And to start, the combat tab. This tab contains a few vital options for combat. This is where your attack style is chosen. When using melee, your attack style can determine whether you gain experience in attack, strength, defense, or all three at once. When using ranged, it can affect whether or not you gain defense experience, and it can affect the speed at which you attack. When using magic, it can again affect whether or not you gain defense experience, and the tab can also be used to automatically cast spells when you have a staff equipped. Beyond attack styles, this tab is also home to the special attack bar. Many weapons in old school RuneScape offer special attacks, unique attacks which offer bonuses like greater accuracy or multiple hits at once, at the expense of special attack energy. Next up, let's take a look at the stats tab. This tab shows your current level and experience in each skill. It also shows the total level of your account. Through this tab, you can open a skill guide for any of the 23 skills in old school. These so-called guides don't really tell you how to use the skills, but they do have a lot of information about level requirements and sometimes ingredients to use or create certain things. Now, let's take a look at the quest tab. The quest tab tracks your progress through each quest in old school. Clicking or tapping on any of these quests will bring up a quest journal. These detail your progress through quests you have started or completed and show requirements to complete a quest for those you have not. However, this is not the only function of this tab. For desktop users, the top right contains a few colored icons which can be clicked to access three more tabs. The achievement diary tab, the minigame tab, and the current favor tab. For mobile users, there are arrows at the top of the interface to switch between these different interfaces. In old school, achievement diaries exist for key areas of the map. These are collections of area-specific challenges and tasks to accomplish. Once you complete a diary, you receive a one-off reward and unlock some new content. Your progress through the tasks of achievement diaries is logged in the achievement diary tab, and clicking or tapping on one of these diaries will show you a full list of tasks to complete. A number of mini-games can be found throughout old school, ranging from places to meet up with and fight other players, to unique training methods for various skills. The minigame tab found within the quest tab includes a full list of minigames in old school. On top of this, you can get a free teleport to a number of these minigames every half an hour. And finally, the Karend favor tab found within the quest tab tracks your progress when winning the favor of the five houses of Karend, a city found on the continent of Zaya on the far west of the map. Moving on, let's take a look at your inventory. The inventory tab is perhaps the most important tab, as it's the one you're going to find yourself using constantly. Simply put, your inventory contains the items your character is holding, and it's also where you interact with them. Whether you are attempting to wield a weapon, eat food to heal, or combining ingredients to create a potion, all of that is done in your inventory. Your inventory has 28 slots. This means that you can hold 28 items or 28 stacks of items. Moving on, let's take a look at the equipment tab. This tab displays the equipment which you are currently wearing. Beyond this, you can also use a button at the bottom to open the equipment stats interface. This displays the specific bonuses of all of the equipment which you are wearing. The tab can also be used to access the guide price interface. This allows you to look up the price of items in your inventory and even search through all tradable items to find out how much they are currently selling for. The final interface accessed through the equipment tab is the items kept on death screen. This window shows you which of your items you will keep if you die and which you will lose. Now let's take a look at the prayer tab. In old school RuneScape, prayers offer temporary boosts to combat stats as well as a few other utilities. Enabling prayers will slowly drain your prayer points, and once your prayer points reach zero, you must go and recharge them at an altar. The prayer tab is where you can find the details of each prayer and where they can be enabled or disabled. The spellbook tab contains a list of spells which can be cast using the magic skill. The tab includes brief descriptions of each spell as well as the magic level, runes, and items required to cast them. If you have the required runes, items, and level to cast a spell, you can do so by clicking or tapping it in the spellbook. The spellbook on mobile differs quite significantly from the spellbook on the desktop client. The mobile spellbook allows you to filter out certain spells and enlarges the ones which remain. This makes tapping on the correct spell a much easier task. You can filter out the different spells by their type, so combat, teleport, or utility, or based on the runes you are currently holding or the level required to cast the spell. There is also a dedicated info button. 
Tap this button and then tap on a spell to see the required runes and a brief description. Next, we have the friends list. Your friends list is a collection of people you want to keep in touch with. You can add players to your friends list in the friends list tab. You will be notified when people on this list log in and you'll also be able to message them directly. You also have an ignore list, which can be accessed in the top right of this tab. Adding a player to your ignore list will prevent you from seeing their messages in chat. Moving on, we have the account management tab. This tab provides you with core information about your account, such as days remaining of membership, and inbox messages. It also provides you with quick access to some useful links. Next up, the clan chat tab. Clan chats are a chat room where you can talk with a group of players who can be located anywhere in game on any world. You can join clan chats through the clan chat tab, and you can also set up your own clan chat. Moving on, let's look at the settings tab. The settings tab contains, you guessed it, the general settings for old school. They are split into four general categories. This includes display settings, such as camera zoom, brightness, and a few other basic options. Sound options for music, sound effects, and area sounds. Chat options, including enabling or disabling chat effects, the profanity filter, and more. And finally, control options. This includes several settings which might affect how you interact with the game. The available settings on mobile and desktop can vary quite a bit. Desktop users have the ability to choose between fixed mode and resizable mode. Resizable mode causes the game to fill the entire window, whereas fixed mode remains a set size and only has one option for the interface. Next, we have the emote tab. If you want to convey a message to someone in game but words just don't quite cut it, the emote tab might come in handy. Here you can find a number of basic and fun emotes to have your character perform. The music tab tells you what music is currently playing in game, as well as allowing you to choose a song which you would like to play. As tracks are unlocked as you explore the world, the music tab also displays which tracks you have and have not unlocked. And the final tab, the logout tab. The logout tab has one very useful function, the in-game world switcher. This lets you hop from world to world without having to re-enter your login information. The logout tab also has one terrible useless function, the logout button. Arguably the worst feature in all of old school. Essentially, it's a feature for pathetic quitters and it should never be used. Anyway, that just about covers all of the different tabs in the old school interface. To top off the video, let's take a look at a few of the most important interfaces you might encounter in game. First up, the world map. The world map is pretty intuitive and you should be able to use it without an introduction, but there are definitely a few features worth pointing out. The world map is opened using the globe icon found beneath the minimap. Left clicking or tapping will open the map in a pop-up interface and a full screen option is available by right clicking or long pressing. The button in the bottom left of the map opens up the key. Clicking or tapping on any of the items in the key will highlight it across the map. Just beneath the key, there are a few options to toggle some of the additional features of the map. The you are here marker shows where you are currently stood. And intramap links show how different parts of dungeons are connected. The search box is very useful for learning where things are. Let's say you're watching a quest guide and it tells you to go to Yenil. Well, pop Yenil into the search box and hit enter. The map will quickly move straight over. You can zoom in and out of the map using the buttons found in the bottom right of the interface. Next, let's take a quick look at the bank interface. Your bank is where you store items that you don't currently need. You can arrange the items items in your bank however you would like, and create different tabs with ease. To create a tab, simply drag one of the items in your bank onto the little plus icon at the top of the window. Along the bottom of the bank interface you have several options. The rearrange mode determines how items move when you reorder them in your bank. The swap option will directly switch two items in the bank, whereas insert will insert the moved item in between the others which are already there. The withdraw as option lets you decide whether items are withdrawn as the raw items themselves or as banknotes. Banknotes are a stackable version of an item, allowing you to carry a large number of a given item in a single inventory slot. The quantity option lets you decide how many items are withdrawn when you left click or tap an item in your bank. The padlock icon enables always set placeholders. Placeholders are phantom items in your bank which reserve a given slot to a particular item. These are very useful for keeping your bank organized. The always set placeholders option means that whenever you withdraw the last of an item from your bank, a placeholder will be set, reserving the spot for that item in the future. The search button lets you quickly search all of the items in your bank, and the two final buttons in the bottom right allow you to deposit all of the items in your inventory at once, or all of the items you have equipped. Remember, talk to any banker in-game to set yourself up with a bank pin. A bank pin acts as a last line of defense against anyone who gains access to your account being able to get your items, so make sure you set one up as soon as possible. Now, let's take a brief look at trading with other players, both directly and via the Grand Exchange. 
Trading with other players is about as simple as it gets. There is an accept button and a decline button. As you and the player you are trading add items to the offer screen, they'll appear on either side, alongside a valuation based on the current grand exchange price of the items. After you both accept, you'll see a confirmation screen. Always use this screen to double check the content of a trade before accepting. Trading directly with other players is not always the best way to trade, and that is where the grand exchange comes in. The Grand Exchange allows you to place offers to buy or sell items which can be fulfilled by any player on any world. When you open up the Grand Exchange interface, you can choose to place either a buy or a sell offer. When placing a buy offer, you will need to search for the item you would like to buy. When placing a sell offer, you'll need to select the item from your inventory. All you need to do is choose the quantity of the item you would like to trade and the price you would like to pay or receive. After that, press confirm and just wait for the trade to complete. As other players create buy or sell offers which are compatible with yours, the trade will complete and you can collect your items or coins. And that is where we're going to finish off this video. Remember, Old School RuneScape is now available on mobile. Check out the link in the description to download it free on iOS or Android. If you're interested in more brief introductions to the various aspects of Old School RuneScape, check out the videos linked on screen and in the description. Thank you all for watching and good luck with your Old School adventure.